During Aaron's burial, a wolf suddenly came and grabbed a dead man by the neck. What happened next will shock you. In the local church, at the burial ceremony of Aaron, only a few people were gathered. Aaron had lived a quiet and private life. He kept to himself when he was alive, and as a result, he had little friends. He had a friendly demeanor though, and a smile for everyone his eyes fell upon. However, he was wary of making friends. He never held conversations longer than he deemed necessary, and the moment he got what he wanted, he retreated to his condo on the edge of town. So it came as no shock when less than a dozen people turned up for his burial, and even at that, more than half of them didn't know him. They simply came to show support for a member of their community who had passed on. In the church, the front pews held the few people who actually knew Aaron. Jace, a 12-year-old boy whom Aaron had adored even until his dying day, Aaron's lawyer, and the few more people that Jace had no idea about. He was sad that there was such a poor turnout at the burial. He knew that Aaron deserved so much more. He was certain that if people knew what a sweet soul Aaron had been, then the church would have been full to its brim. Anyway, there was nothing that could be done. Aaron had always been a private person, and Jace was sure that he would have loved the fact that so few people graced his burial. If there was one thing Aaron hated, it was crowds. As the preacher stood on the pulpit, preaching to the congregation and offering words of solace to the bereaved, the coffin was right in front of the altar where Aaron was lying in state. Soon, the preacher rounded up his preaching, and just as he signaled for the burial to commence, a shocked silence fell on the entire church as a black-coated wolf sauntered in through the open doors. The wolf was breathtaking. Its fur was pitch black, but there were patches of white on several parts of the body. The wolf was huge and had this intimidating presence, and the second the congregation saw it, many of them shrieked in shock. Jace was not left out. He surged to his feet and he recognized the wolf. Her name was Husky. Unable to say anything, he watched with bated breath as the animal walked through the aisle of the church towards the coffin. The wolf did not even spare the people any glance. Her eyes were focused on the coffin and nothing could tear them away. Husky then stopped before the coffin. It was low enough so she could peer into its interior with her snout almost in Aaron's face. The preacher was stepping backwards as he clutched his microphone tightly like a weapon. Among the congregation, someone called for a weapon to scare off the animal, while someone else called for the cops. With all the commotion going on behind her, Husky paid them no mind as she focused on Aaron. A strangled sound escaped her jaw as she buried her face into the coffin and began to lick Aaron's face. A shocked gasp moved through the congregation as they watched with bated breath. Husky continued licking Aaron's face, and after a while, another sad whine escaped her jaws. It was as if she was shocked that Aaron was not responding to her. It was a sad picture to watch, and all of them who were scared before forgot all about it as they watched the display of emotions from the wolf. However, all that changed at once as Husky suddenly bared her teeth and grabbed Aaron by the neck. Everyone screamed in shock as the wolf tried to drag Aaron out of the coffin. The coffin shook under the weight of the wolf's pulling, but it held fast and after a while, Husky let go of Aaron, and like a cat out of the bag, hurried out of the church. Stupefied, Jace watched as the animal ran past him and disappeared into the forest. He was perplexed just like everyone else. He didn't know Husky could ever do such a thing to Aaron, living or dead, and this was a letdown. Jace knew this because just like him, Husky was one of the few friends Aaron had when he was alive. At first, it was just Jace and Aaron. Jace lived in the house closest to Aaron's, and whenever his parents were off to work, he spent the time with the old man. He ran errands and made sure that his groceries were always stocked. Jace spent a lot of time with Aaron, and the old man told him so much about his past. Aaron was a veteran soldier, and a lot of his pals had died out in the battlefield. He had seen too much blood and death, which was the reason he was trying so hard not to make friends, because he couldn't bear to lose them to death yet again. So he kept to himself and refused to mingle. However, he was unable to keep that rule when it came to Jace. He liked the little kid almost immediately. He loved the way Jace asked questions, and he loved it when he explained the answers in a way he understood perfectly. It was always a thing of joy. At first, Aaron and Jace did the groceries together, but things changed not too long after when Aaron became too ill 
Jace had to go on his own. Jace didn't mind at all. He enjoyed doing these things for the old man. He didn't see them as work. And if he could do even more, then he would gladly do them all. Everything was going great for both of them until Husky wobbled into their lives. Aaron found her on the edge of the woods, bleeding profusely from a wound caused by the sharp edges of a hunter's trap. She had been in severe pain, and Aaron knew that if he didn't do something, then the wolf was going to bleed to death. He realized that he couldn't allow that to happen. He took in the wolf and treated her wounds. He placed her in his barn. It had been built for a horse, but since he didn't have any, the wolf had it all to herself. The floor was covered in hay, so it was always warm, and the windows were shut tight so the cold air didn't get in. He then used the little medical knowledge he had from his days in the military to clean the wound, treat it, and then stitch it up as well. All through the process, not once did the wolf get aggressive or try to attack him. It was as if the moment she laid eyes on him, she knew she could trust him with her life. Aaron felt it was an honor and pledged to do his best for the animal. While the wolf recuperated, he fed her and made sure she was comfortable at all times. He sent Jace to the market to buy what the wolf could eat, and this change in the grocery list is what piqued the little boy's interest. He was buying way more meat than usual, and it was odd. When he asked Aaron about it, he didn't get a definitive answer. He could see right off that the elderly man was trying to keep the secret from him, and that only served to make him even more interested. He bought everything as asked, and dropped them off at the condo. Then pretending to leave, he hid across the yard so he could watch everything Aaron was doing. He saw Aaron go into the barn with the meat and feed the wolf. Jace was shocked, but only for a short while, because taking care of an injured wolf just felt like something Aaron would do. He was that sweet a soul. He joined Aaron at the barn, letting him know that the presence of the wolf was no longer a secret. Aaron told him not to tell anyone. Wolves in the woods were at severe risk because hunters and poachers were always after them. If care was not taken, there would be no wolf left in the forest because humans were killing them all. Jace understood and promised not to tell a soul. Over time, the friendship between two humans and the wolf grew. It was Jace who gave her the name Husky because despite being with them for weeks, Aaron still hadn't come up with a name for her. Husky was friendly with both of them. She allowed them to run their fingers through her fur and once in a while, she licked their faces. Soon, her wound healed completely, and she began to walk well once again. Erin no longer had to buy her meat, because she went out to hunt herself. At first, she went out during the day and returned to the barn at night, but soon after, she started staying out for days at a time, but she always came back. When she did, she sat on Erin's front porch, and he would join her there while they sat in companionable silence. Many times, Jace joined them, and it was always a heartwarming moment. If things continued that way, life would have been perfect, but tragedy was lurking just around the corner, one neither of them had seen coming. Aaron sent Jace to go get him groceries as usual, and when he returned, Aaron said he wanted to eat some bread. So Jace offered to make some tea to go with the bread. Making the tea didn't take much time. Everything Jace needed was right there. He didn't spend more than five minutes in the kitchen. However, when he emerged with the tea, his eyes met a sight that will never be forgotten. Aaron was splayed on the floor, his entire body shaking and slices of bread scattered all around him. The tray holding the tea slipped through Jace's fingers and clattered to the floor as Jace ran over to the old man, holding him up. He was confused and in tears he didn't know what to do. He called emergency services and they came in record time. Aaron was loaded into the ambulance and driven to the hospital. Sadly, by the time he got there, the doctors pronounced him dead on arrival and stated that the cause of death was a weak heart due to his old age. Jace was heartbroken. He couldn't understand what was happening. One moment everything had been fine and the next Aaron was gone. Just like that. No matter how he tried to wrap his head around it, he just couldn't pinpoint where exactly things went wrong. News of his death spread through the town like wildfire. The church decided that he must be buried at once because he had no family and only a few friends. If they made him stay out for too long, he could remain in the mortuary. So the burial was set for the very next day. Although word was sent out to the members of the congregation, only a few actually turned up. Even Husky didn't miss out on saying one final goodbye to Aaron. And now, 
Staring at the spot the wolf had just vacated, Jace was confused. He still didn't understand why Husky did what she did. The preacher was visibly shaken, just like everyone else. He cleared his throat and slapped his microphone as if he was trying to get himself back in control. Then just as he was about to speak, there was a huge gasp as Aaron suddenly sat up from the coffin, his eyes wide open as he gasped for breath. A scream of shock washed through the congregation as they stared at the supposedly dead man who was sitting up in his coffin. Aaron looked around and saw where he was. He saw Jace who was crying profusely at the front pew. The little boy hurried over and hugged him at once. But the hug was short-lived because Jace saw that Aaron was running a fever. An ambulance was called and Aaron was driven once more to the hospital. Jace never left his side. He held his hand tightly as if doing otherwise would take the old man from him once again. Aaron was driven to the emergency ward and the doctor worked on him. For the next two hours, it was nothing but anguish as everyone waited with bated breaths. No one understood how a man who had been confirmed dead could suddenly come back alive. And even more mysterious was how a wolf had been instrumental in it. Soon the doctor emerged and he had shocking news for them. Aaron never died. What he suffered was an allergic reaction. Aaron was allergic to peanuts, and at the time of his supposed death, he consumed something that contained peanuts. At that, Jace remembered the bread he bought. It had peanuts in it. The peanut was the reason he bought the bread in the first place. He never knew that Aaron was allergic. The old man never said a word about it. He felt a huge sense of guilt fall over him as he realized the danger he had put his friend in. The doctor continued to explain what happened. Part of the symptoms of an allergic reaction to peanuts is paralysis, and when that happens, the muscles relax and the tongue can fall back, thereby blocking off the airways. This slows down breathing to the barest minimum and slows down the heartbeat as well, which is why made the first doctor he was taken to pronounce him dead. Suddenly everything made sense to Jace. He realized now what had happened and how Aaron had come back to life. Without realizing it, Husky had saved his life. That moment when she grabbed his neck and tried to pull him out of the coffin, she shifted his body in the box and was able to tilt its head backwards. This pulled his tongue forward and opened up his airways, causing him to breathe properly again. After a while, the doctor said he could go see Aaron. The peanut had been removed from his system, so he was fine and would be discharged soon. When Jace walked in, he couldn't stop the tears as he begged for forgiveness from the elderly man. If he had not bought the bread, Aaron would have never come so close to losing his life. Aaron told him not to ask for forgiveness because he was the one who should do it. Aaron said he should have told Jace about his condition, but he kept it to himself. He was so scared of making friends and meeting new people, and that almost cost him his life. He promised that he would not keep any more secrets from Jace. Not long after, Aaron was discharged from the hospital, and the first place he went into was the woods. He found Husky and gave her a big hug. She had saved his life, and he didn't think there was anything he could do to repay that. Everything that happened taught him a big lesson. It was the value of friends. He swore to make more friends and let them know important things about him, so there would never be a repeat of what happened. What a touching story. Who would have thought Husky would repay her death in such a miraculous way? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to hit the like or subscribe button. See you in the next video.